Good morning, folks. We begin just out ahead of our C-shaped phalanx of solar tornadoes, watching a much smaller filament lift up and snap. There's no major CME involved here, but this small eruption is part of a chain reaction event. Let's switch from 193 to 304 angstroms. We'll zoom back out to see that the massive plasma filament on the northeastern limb, it destabilized at the exact time that little filament snapped. It was one of the prettiest entrances to the Earth-facing disk I've seen, but she is gone now. Then, just a few hours later, an umbral surge, shift, and release of the umbral fields at the sunspot below the C-shaped phalanx of solar tornadoes tripped up the equilibrium those filaments had found in the corona, and just like that, the solar tornadoes are just about gone, lost back down to the surface of the sun. There were no significant solar flares to report, sea range only. Looking in on the sunspot that caused the filament collapse, we see growth and spreading, but the spread is separating the magnetics as well. Still need another day or two to analyze those cresting the limb now. In 211 angstroms, we're beginning to see that the transequatorial portion of the corona hole is not quite as visible as the southern extension. Both will face Earth soon, however. Solar wind. The coronal hole stream took the speed up over 700 kilometers per second. Plasma temperature, which had been around 1 to 2,000 Kelvin, is now pushing 70 to 80,000. We've been unstable and in and out of geomagnetic storm conditions. Beneath our feet, we're back at unusual locations. Albania is not your everyday quake zone, and Iran only gets upticks every few weeks to months. The real story in this realm, however, is volcanic, as we now add two more volcanoes to the very long list of recent eruptions, especially from Alaska over to the Kamchatka Peninsula of Russia. Top article today comes with a video, the Dawn mission and its ion propulsion. This is a very important mission given some Starwater hypotheses about the chemical makeup of asteroid belt objects. It has already revolutionized how we look at Vesta, and now it's on its way to Ceres. It arrives on March 6th. We're in the Indian Ocean where Major Cyclone Kate still can't find anyone to play with out there. Meanwhile, Yang Mi is now sitting directly on top of yesterday's Earth spot quake shifting westward slowly. In the North Pacific, you see two very powerful lows. The low nearer Alaska is matched with a high-pressure node to the southeast, wrapping its wind drive back around and absolutely frosting the U.S. and Canada. The temperature overlay shows that it is indeed warmer in parts of Alaska than in parts of the southernmost continental United States. In fact, for as long as I've looked at the temperature delta and departure from normal, I don't think I've ever seen it look like this. That's 20, 25, 30 degrees below normal, and the winter weather continues. In terms of a frost and freeze condition, tomorrow morning will deliver this. Most of the country under a cold watch, with some areas being very cold. In Europe, a low has shifted to the north and brought Sweden and Finland onto the playing field Norway has already occupied for two days. We've got lows to the east and that moisture flow bringing snow to Germany and surrounding areas. If anything, note how Finland is almost completely in purple today. Would anyone like to guess where the convergence is down under? Low between nations shifting its convergence back up across northern Australia. I'd say your weather is boring me down under, but... These are indeed thunderstorm lines. We've got the current conditions and shots of our star to close. It's 6.15 a.m. Eastern Time, 5.15 a.m. Central. That's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.